के सी वेणुगोपाल जी तारे कन्वर जी के सुधाकरण जी वी डी सतीशन जी विश्वनाथ पेरुमल जी एन डी अपाचन जी ए पी अनिल कुमार जी एडवोकेट टी सिद्दीक जी जे सी बालाकृष्ण जी एंड फ्रॉम तमिलनाडु थिरु जी ऑल माय ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स वर्कर्स यू डी एफ वर्कर्स कांग्रेस वर्कर्स फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम द प्रेस आई एड लाइक टू वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू हियर टूडे आई एम क्वाइट हैप्पी टूडे दैट वी हैव गिवन होम्स टू मैनी ऑफ आर सिस्टर्स एंड देर फैमिलीज फॉर डिफरेंट रीजन्स दे हैड सेटबैक्स इन देर लाइफ दे वॉज स्ट्रगलिंग एंड आई एम हैप्पी that the congress leaders congress workers have got together and given them shelter and just now i told venu gopal that i think next round of houses all the congress leaders including me should be involved in building them i think one of the big changes that we have to make in our country is respect and dignity of labor so i think it's a good signal if we build these houses put some bricks maybe do some painting and show the people of wayanad and the people of the country that physical labor is valuable and is dignified many of us live in houses but we never ask the question who built this house who put these bricks who built this wall who painted the wall who set up the structure and i think it's a very important question to ask when we first discussed this project among our leaders there was quite a lot of enthusiasm and they were quite excited about doing this with the people of vaina we chose the name kaithangu which means helping hand in your beautiful malayalam and there were many challenges it looks quite simple but there were many challenges in this project how to choose the beneficiaries because there were so many the houses were built in difficult terrain with hills with poor roads and because we want to build as many houses as possible we wanted to keep the costs quite low but without compromising on the minimum requirement and the quality so i'm quite happy today that we have been able to give 25 families a place to stay and i was also quite happy that i recognized a few of the children and i had promised them a house so i was quite happy that i was able to fulfill that promise so i would like to thank all our leaders district block leaders mandalam presidents udf allies all our workers who were involved in this project and who supported us and i'd also like to thank the people of vaynar who helped us complete these houses and fulfill the dream for these 25 families and i would very much like that the people of vaynar help us with this project and help us give as many houses as possible to people who are struggling for shelter and to the beneficiaries i'd like to say we know that you have struggled over the last few years and we also understand that giving you shelter is not going to solve your problems but we want you to know that we are very proud of you of the dignity with which you have faced your difficulties and i would also like to say that in choosing our beneficiaries we have not looked at political considerations at all for us all the people of vaynar are our family and anybody who is in trouble we would proudly help today i had i held the meeting which we hold periodically about development in the constituency disha meeting and i also went to see the family of a young man who was killed by a tiger and they told me that they felt that he might have been saved if there had been a proper medical facility here medical college here we've written to the chief minister 
We've raised this issue on multiple occasions. I raised it again at the meeting today. And it's sad that it is taking so long to develop a medical college in Vyanar. For us, this is not a political issue, it is a humanitarian issue. And the chief minister should view it in that manner. And he should expedite the building of a medical college in this constituency. I mentioned to you about the man-animal conflict. And again, hundreds of people are killed by animals in our constituency. And we have to ensure that this issue is resolved amicably for both human beings and animals. You're all aware of the buffer zone issue. We are happy that the Supreme Court is taking cognizance and looking into the matter. But it's also important that this issue is resolved as soon as possible. I'm told that no properties are being bought and sold there. And I think it's important that we allow people to take advantage of their properties. Throughout the Bharat Chodo Yatra, I met farmers who were unhappy. In fact, I can state here that I did not meet a single farmer who was happy. Not a single one told me that he's happy with his life, with his work, with what he gets for his labor. They complained about the insurance scheme, the prime minister's insurance scheme. They complained about the seeds. They complained about a lack of marketing. They complained about the farm laws. They asked me why billionaires can have their loans forgiven, but they can't. And I think it's very important that both the national government and the state government support our farmers and develop a strategy for the productive class, for the farming class in India. And when I say farmers, I also include the laborers who work on their farms. A few days ago, I gave a speech in Parliament about the relationship between our Prime Minister and Mr. Adani. I spoke in the most, most polite, respectful tone. I did not use any bad language. I did not abuse anybody. I just raised certain facts. I pointed out how Mr. Adani traveled with the Prime Minister to foreign countries, and then immediately after was rewarded by getting contracts in these countries. I showed how 30% of the airport traffic is today controlled by Mr. Adani simply because he has a relationship with the Prime Minister. I spoke about how the rules were changed so that Mr. Adani could get these airports. Earlier, people who did not have experience in running airports were not allowed to participate and the rules were changed to allow Mr. Adani to participate. The Niti Ayog, other institutions commented on this and said he should not be allowed, but he was still allowed. A official in Sri Lanka stated in a meeting in Sri Lanka, in a public hearing, that the Prime Minister, the President of Sri Lanka told him that Mr. Modi had pressurized him to give a contract to Mr. Adani in Sri Lanka. Immediately after the Prime Minister went to Bangladesh, Mr. Adani gets a contract from Bangladesh. Mr. Adani and the Prime Minister go to Australia. The state bank gives a loan of $1 billion to Mr. Adani for a mining project. The biggest, most strategic airport, Mumbai airport, is taken over by Mr. Adani after agencies threaten the people who ran the airport. And after I gave this speech, most of my speech was edited out and was not allowed to go on the record of parliament. Apparently, saying the name Adani and Ambani together is to insult the Prime Minister of India. But you can see pictures of them together all across the internet. You can see the Prime Minister flying in Mr. Adani's plane. You can see him relaxing, laughing with Mr. Adani inside his plane. Mr. Adani travels on delegations with the Prime Minister to foreign countries. He magically arrives in foreign countries when the Prime Minister is there. 
and nothing that I said was untrue. It is all factual. And anybody can go in the internet, go to Google, and ask the questions I have asked, and you will find over there. According to the rules, a speech can be, parts of a speech can be removed from the record if you are saying something without support or if you are insulting someone. I did not insult anybody. I used the kindest language, the most polite language, and everything I said was based on proof. I was asked to show proof with regards to what I said, and I have written a letter to the speaker with every single point that they have removed and the supporting proof. But I don't expect that my words will be allowed to go on the record. At the same time, the Prime Minister directly insults me. He says, why is your name Gandhi and not Nehru? So the Prime Minister of the country directly insults me, but his words are not taken off the record. But it does not matter because the truth always comes out. And all you had to do was look at my face when I was speaking and look at his face, his face while he was speaking. Look at how many times he drank water, how his hand was shaking when he was drinking water, and you'll understand everything. See, he is used to, he thinks he's very powerful and people will get scared of him. He doesn't realize the absolute last thing I'm scared of is Narendra Modi. He doesn't realize that the absolute last thing I'm scared of is Narendra Modi, right? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter whether he's the Prime Minister of India, whether he has all the agencies, doesn't matter. Because the truth is not on his side. And one day, he will be forced to face his truth. So, I'd like to thank all of you. If you get a chance, see the Parliament speech, because it's important that you, that you understand what is going on in the country. It's important that you understand the nexus between the Prime Minister and Mr. Adani. Mr. Adani, there's a, there's a list of wealthy people in the world. And in 2014, Mr. Adani was 609th on that list. And from 609th on that list, he became second on the list. He got all the airports, the ports, defense contracts, coal contracts, mining contracts, road contracts, agriculture, every industry Mr. Adani is set to monopolize. And there are shell companies abroad that are sending thousands of crores of rupees into India and nobody knows who these shell companies belong to. The question is, who does this money belong to that is in these shell companies that is coming into India? I asked the Prime Minister some questions. I asked him about his relationship with Mr. Adani. I asked him about how Mr. Adani has grown so fast. The Prime Minister did not answer a single question. His response to my questions was, why are you not called Nehru? Why are you called Gandhi? Because generally, I don't know, maybe Mr. maybe Mr. Modi doesn't understand this, but generally in India, our surname is the surname of our father. So I'd like to thank all of you for coming here. It's always a pleasure for me to come here. You know, when I was on the Yatra, I said to uh, some journalists in Kashmir that, you know, I felt when I walked into Kashmir that I was coming home. I said when I went to Kashmir, I told some of the journalists who asked me, what are you feeling? I said, I'm feeling as if I've come home. But after walking 3,500 kilometers, when I just came back to Vainar, I'm also feeling as if I came home. I really appreciate that you don't treat me like a political leader, that you treat me like a family member. Mm -hmm. It's the most valuable thing that you do for me. More important than the votes is, 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 is that you treat me like family. So thank you very much. Nandai. And I have to also bring my mother here soon. <laughs>